Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. How are you all? I know yesterday would have been lots of fun for all of you guys as Diwali, we all celebrated Diwali. With that, with the light of hope and happiness, let's get back to our studies and let's talk about RBI 247. So what do we have for today? So today we are going to talk about two important news articles. The first is an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding that has been signed between Gift City and the Fintech Association of Japan. And the second news talks about a partnership between NPCI, Bharat Bill Payment System and Kotak Mahindra Bank in order to provide for credit card bill payments. So let's get started with the very first news. That is the Memorandum of Understanding, which has been signed between Gift City. This is the Gift City and Fintech Association of Japan. Now, let's talk about first the MOU and then we can talk about this Gift City. So if we talk about the MOU, so according to this MOU, both of these parties have come together in order to promote, in order to foster innovation and entrepreneurship in the fintech domain. So as from the name it suggests, it, suggests it is the Fintech Association of Japan. And so they want to bring in certain innovation and promote innovation and entrepreneurship so that young minds, the young innovators could, ex could take, could take uh, could take the opportunities in India and Japan and make utmost use of it. So according to this MOU, both the entities will be conducting certain programs, certain programs and certain sessions, incubation sessions, hackathons and boot camps in order to uh, expose this young innovators so that these opportunities could be available to them and thereby leading to making the gift city as the fintech hub in India and also to promote fintech sector in India and Japan. So India or Japan ko financially or zyada strong banane ke liye or zyada resilient banane ke liye and in order to have lots of innovation so that it provides ease of convenience to the people of India and Japan, this MOU has been signed in. Now, what more do we have in this MOU? So, if we talk about uh, what else they are going to do. So, as I have mentioned, both this entity will be organizing certain boot camps, hackathons, incubations and acceleration programs focused on fintech areas. So, these are all they will try to sit down and try to come up with certain ideas, certain kinds. They will be like doing brainstorming activities in order to come up with certain innovation and use that innovation for the betterment of India and Japan. Okay? Now, all of these brainstorming sessions, incubation and acceleration, acceleration sessions will be based on fintech areas. So, fintech areas such as your lending services, payment services, your credit services, your crypto services, so all of the financial services sector, which where you can bring in technology, where you can make use or leverage technology, all of those sectors, even if you talk about the government sector, so even for the government regulatory, for example, UPI, technology based hair product, right? So they are trying to make more innovation, expose expose all of these young innovators and provide them with the opportunity. Now, there will be acceleration programs and incubation centers. Now, these incubation centers will provide the opportunity, will provide the resources, resources in terms of, suppose they need some money in order to test the product, right? Just say RBI also does it, regulatory sandbox also does it, they provide you the regulatory environment, right? Life testing environment provide करती है. वैसे ही incubation centers के अंदर they will be getting certain uh, regulatory advantages as well as certain exemptions as well as certain type of loans in order to uh, conduct the activity or to test the product, the fintech product that they want to come up with. So all of these will be done under this MOU. Apart from that. If we talk about the entrepreneurial program, so what is the objective? The main objective is financial inclusion, cyber, 
cyber security, making use of technology such as artificial intelligence, blockchain technology and human augmentation that is making use of human sensory things into technology. Robotic jaise hoti hai, right? Artificial intelligence, understanding how a human will function or will act or is thinking. All of these is the focus area for this MOU. And this MOU is also aimed to strengthen and create more value for the entities of Gift City. So, Gift City mein jitne bhi financial services and transactions are taking place, it is trying to strengthen them more and provide more innovation in such sectors. Okay, so I hope this is clear to you and how will this be done? So this will be done by spreading awareness, knowledge and empowering the people in the fintech domain. Now let's talk about a little bit about the fintech sector, the fintech hub in India that is gift. So if we talk about gift city, first and foremost is that you should remember the meaning or the full form. So the full form here stands for Gujarat International Financial Tech uh, Center, right? So gift city stands for Gujarat International Financial Tech City. Now this city has been set up in Gandhinagar, Gujarat and it is India's first and only international financial services center. Now you all must have heard about IFSCA, International Financial Services Center authority now this is one of the financial sector regulator i hope you all know that if we talk about domestic regulators we have rbi sebi right we also have what else do we have pfrda for pension irdai for insurance similarly for all the international financial services and transactions that take place in india will be regulated by the international financial services authority in India's IFSC centers, that means in uh, India, there are many proposals that propose kiye gaye hai ki international financial services centers set up. Kiye jayenge. And as of now, we just have Gift City, the first and the only IFSC center in India. And what is this center made for? So, this center was established or is still in process of development in order to develop this country. And in order to develop this area, this territory into an old inclusive developed area whereby we'll have all kinds of residential activities, housing, medical facilities, world class education as well as as well as international financial services and transactions that are at par with the global standards and global regulatory approvals. So, Joby global regulatory approvals hain, ya norms hain, ya requirements hain, ya laws hain, unki accordance mein rahegi IFSCA, that is the uh, gift city. Okay? So, IFSCA regulates the gift city, it is the regulator. Okay? And if you talk about the purpose, why was this gift city first at the first place established? So there was, it has been seen in India that if now, since the world is totally globalized, there are many transactions hote hain that are not only limited to India's territory. For such transactions, we need to move outside. And therefore, during this transactions, what do we require? We require what, what was happening, this corporates and entities and banks as well were moving outside. They were opening their on offshore accounts outside or having offshore centers outside. So in order to bring back those financial services, those transactions back to India so that their entire offshore financial centers offshore and financial centers to be shifted in India whereby they are provided with world-class infrastructure and globally benchmarked regulated environment. So, unko jo bahar mil rahi thi, for example, koi Indian corporates hai ya, ya bank hai that is operating in India and it has certain transactions, certain major transactions that is with, for example, with Australia. So, what that person will do, that corporate will do, it will start having an offshore center in Australia as well. Now, in order to let that such transactions and services back to India, this gift city has been made, has been formed so that these all these transactions could be settled here. 
now if you talk about gift city it is it is in located in india but it will function entirely as a foreign ent entity matlab ek foreign territory ki tarah kaam karega wahan ka jo bhi regulation hoga whatever be the regulation whatever be the law all of this would be decided by ifsca not by rbi or sebi to so, rbi se bhi wahan pe kuch nahi karegi anything any law any judgment any resolution will be provided by ifsca theek hai and uh, if we talk about what about dispute resolution so, since it is the hub of international financial services the singapore arbitration center has been set up for dispute resolution so this is important bahut sare logon ko nahi pata hoga agar koi bhi dispute arise hoti hai in this gift city then it is the singapore singapore arbitration center that is going to resolve any kind of dispute arising in such centers theek hai and apart from that recently this year only our government that is our prime minister has also launched india's first इंटरनेशनल बुलियन एक्सचेंज सो बुलियन एक्सचेंज भी लॉन्च कर दिया गया है इस गिफ्ट सिटी में वॉट आई होप यू ऑल नो द मीनिंग ऑफ बुलियन इट इज सो इन दिस एक्सचेंज बुलियन एक्सचेंज पीपल कैन ट्रेड गोल्ड एस वेल एज सिल्वर तो आप गोल्ड और सिल्वर ट्रेड कर सकते हो वेदर इन इट्स प्योरेस्ट फॉर्म और इवन इट्स डेरिवेटिव तो एक्सचेंज है the purchase and sale of financial products what will be the financial product gold and silver as well as their derivatives theek hai so this was an additional information for you i hope gift city ab aapko samajh aa gaya hoga gift city mein aur kya kya cheeze aayengi gift city mein aapke special economic zones bhi aayenge as you all know about as is it these are part of india it is an indian territory but here they are given certain concessions in terms of tax payment in terms of certain regulation so that the government wants to promote that this area could be developed first at the first place secondly it to promote investment and to encourage exports inko thodi si benefit di ja rahi hai taki isko aap encourage kar sako now a question for you the sez act the sez act the special economic zone act was recently proposed to be amended into some other act and i have covered this right तो देश बिल के नाम से आया था एक बिल दैट टॉक्ड अबाउट रिप्लेसिंग द एस ए जेड एक्ट द क्वेश्चन फॉर यू इज व्हाट इज द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ देश बिल सो दिस थिंग्स टू बी क्लियर टू यू एंड इफ यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर योर आरबीआई सेबी एग्जाम एटलीस्ट वन ईयर करंट अफेयर्स इज रिक्वायर्ड राइट तो आपको ये सब पता होना चाहिए दिस वॉज ए न्यूज इन दर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड एंड टॉक अबाउट द नेक्स्ट न्यूज that talks about the partnership between npci bharat bill payment system and kotak mahindra bank now what is the partnership so the partnership says that both of these have come together and any kind of credit card bill payments of kotak mahindra bank could now be made through bharat bill payment system If we talk about bharat bill payment system it is a wholly owned subsidiary of npci so it has been introduced for credit cards to introduce its credit cards on the bharat bill payment system and with that kotak mahindra bank has become the first private bank to go live in the credit category on bill payment ecosystem iska kya matlab hua what is the advantage so it is going to provide ease and convenience to the customers in the sense that you can now make payment of your credit card bill payments through your bharat bill payment now bharat bill payment system this bbpi uh, bbps is available both in physical as well as electronic form so from anywhere to so, aap kisi bhi point in time pe raat ke 12 baje 1 baje any time anywhere you can make the payment from any location through the bharat bill payment enabled channels what are these channels channels such as icici bank Axis Bank and HDFC Bank, and you also get an instant confirmation on the payment because they make use of your UPI facility as well. So, इस तरीके से आपको ऐसा नहीं कि कोटक का अकाउंट है, कोटक की क्रेडिट कार्ड पेमेंट करनी है, तो उसके थ्रू ही करना है. Now, using this Bharat Bill payment system, you can make the payment. Now, this Bharat Bill payment unit is also very important for you guys, because it was in the news. 
RBI has been talking about it. So let's talk about it in a very short manner, in a very crisp manner. So what is this BBPS? As we all know from the name itself, it is an integrated system where you can make any kind of bill related payments. The payments for utilities such as electricity, gas, landline bills, your broadband, mobile, water bill, supply bill, uh, water supply bill, landline bill, DTH bill, any kind of bill could be made through using the Bharat bill payment system. Okay? And it offers an interoperable and accessible bill payment service. Interoperable means across all the segments through a network of agents. And these agents are known as Bharat bill payment units. Now, we have also discussed in RBI 247 playlist. Mein jao, wahan aapko mil and why was this introduced? So this was introduced in order to give a major push to the digital payments and formalizing the entire bill payment system in India. If you have any payment, you don't have to do it from 10 places, just one place, that is the Bharat bill payment system. Now, this BBP, BBPU units could be either in physical form or online as I have mentioned and this physical uh, the physical op units who are going to be this operators the Bharat bill payment operators so these operators could either be your banks or your non banks a banks or non banks ke liye RBI ne kuch naya resolution laya tha directives guidelines laya the whereby it said that in order to encourage more of the non bank entities to take up the uh, activity of a Bharat bill payment operator or unit had reduced their net worth from rupees 100 crores. 100 crores se reduced karke 25 crores kar diya tha. So if any non-bank entity having a net worth of just 25 crores could set up or could become a Bharat bill payment operating unit. So you have an operating unit. Ka tarcha diya Chike, if we talk about the number of bills, so there are nearly 45 crore bills that are permitted under the BBPS and payments can be made through cash, uh, check transfers and electronic modes. Chike? And all the bill aggregators and banks will be known as the Bharat bill payment operating units and they will be conducting or taking care or carrying the transactions for the customers. Now who is going to regulate them? Who is going to be the central unit? Operators to banks or non-banks who will be the central unit or the central operator it will be NPCI so this is also important so NPCI so any kind of regulation laws fram framework that needs to be made will be made by NPCI I hope BB uh, Bharat bill payment system ke baare mein aapko clear ho gaya hoga BBPS now let's talk about NPCI. NPCI के बारे में इतना बात कर रहे हैं, तो ओड़ा सा उसके बारे में डिस्कस करते हैं. NPCI first and foremost stands for National Payment Corporation of India. We talk about its establishment. So it was established with the combined effort of RBI, Reserve Bank of India and the Indian Bank Association. So इनकी guidance, इनकी support से it was established and it was established as a sector. Section 8 Company. Companies Act 2013. Companies Act 2013 ke according Section 8 Company ki tara form kiya gaya tha. So what does it mean as Section 8? Section 8 as I have mentioned numerous times it talks about non-profit organizations or companies jis ke paas kuch objective ho. So what was the objective for NPCI? So its objective was to strengthen the payment infrastructure, the retail payment infrastructure in India. And we talk about NPCI, it is an umbrella organization for any retail payments in India and it was incorporated in the year 2008. If we talk about the ownership, then presently 56 banks are the shareholders of which 19 are public sector banks, 17 private sectors, three foreign sectors, seven multi-state cooperative banks and 10 re regional rural banks. And this makes this system a behemoth and they are able to tap each and every sector. So here we need to increase the role of the regional rural banks so that the benefit that NPCI is trying to promote, trying to uh, give out to the society could reach even to the marginalized sector of the economy, the low income sector of the economy. The, the people who are not that financially literate. Okay? 
तो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट एन और भी हैं द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट इज द प्रोडक्ट्स एंड सर्विसेज दैट एन पी सी आई ऑफर्स एन पी सी आई ऑफर्स ए लॉट्स ऑफ सर्विसेज फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स एंड सर्विसेज सच एज योर आई एम पी एज इमीडिएट पेमेंट सर्विस देन यू हैव योर रुपे कार्ड्स बोथ डेबिट एंड क्रेडिट कार्ड्स देन यू हैव द भरत बिल पेमेंट सिस्टम दैट वी जस्ट टॉक्ड अबाउट एन एस सी एच नेशनल ऑटोमेटेड क्लियरिंग हाउस देन एन ई टी सी नेशनल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक टॉल कलेक्शन then cts your check truncation system then nfs the national financial switch then we have aeps aadhar enabled payment sir payment system bhim that is bharat interface for money and finally upi and star 99 hash so these are some of the services that are provided by npci sabke khud ke alag alag role hain all of these are meant to provide you with more convenience to the people so that they they can uh, they can make payment in a very hassle free manner to in sab ke full forms maine aapko is pdf mein provide kar diye hain we have already discussed all of these types in, in one of our rbi 247 video to usko aap dekh lena wahan se aapko clear ho jayega in case if you want me to cover this in more details then you can write it down in the comment section so that i can take a session a separate session on this right now let's move forward and this we have already talked about focused on bringing innovation in the retail system just for you to have a broader understanding and since the pdf will be available to you to wahan se aapko sara pata lag jayega now let's move forward and look at the question so these are the full forms that i have provided to you now let's talk about the questions that we have for today so jo bhi humne discuss kiya based on that we have certain questions for you the first question for you says which of the following became the first private bank in the credit category on bharat bill payment system so this question could be asked in your phase 1 of rbi or sebi exam current affairs finance based question hai you need to tell me and identify the correct answer now moving forward to the next question the question says in order to promote innovation in entrepreneurship in the fintech domain recently gift city signed mou which with which of the following organization ab aapko ye zarur yaad hoga ki fintech association tha now you need to tell me with which country is it germany japan uk australia or south korea theek hai now let's move forward to the third question which says which of the following organization has been set up for dispute resolution at gift city aur yahan pe aap likh sakte the international financial services centers in india agar india international financial services centers ki baat ki jati hai then who is going to be the dispute resolution is it london based resolution center or international arbitration center or the singapore arbitration center german arbitration center or is it the supreme court of india since it is established in india since gift city is in india so is it the supreme court of india you need to identify and tell me the correct answer and this is also very very important aapko pata hona chahiye i am sure most of you must not be knowing about this answer before we discussed right and fourth question for you which of the following is not a product offered by npci full forms hamesha please yaad rakhna uh, questions question papers mein aapse bahut sare full forms puche jate hain and you just need to identify which among these is not a product that is offered by npci theek hai ab aapko dikhne mein similar lagenge but there is a mistake or there is certain a uh, certain words or terminology here is different from what it is in the npci's product and finally the last question for today which says which of the following is one is one of the financial facility offered by npci again it has been about npci the products and it talks about the full forms ki kaun sa isme se sahi hai right so this is all for today that i wanted to discuss with you answers are already provided in case of any doubt you can always write it down in the comment section in case of any feedback also that you can give it in the comment section keep learning we are doing our best you do your best and let's succeed and let's 
give our best in the examination and clear it with flying colors. Till then, take care and bye-bye.